Now, here's a question for you. Do we actually know how to behave well in front of others anymore? Time was when a swift clip round the ear would ensue. If you didn't say please and thank you, spoke with your mouth full or didn't hold the door for a grown-up. But times have changed, it seems, as a State of the Nation survey out today shows one in three of us who were asked believe people aren't as polite as they used to be. Uh, Is it because they can't be bothered? Is it because they just don't know how you should behave? Well, there's a question for Grant Harold. He's a former butler to the royal family, amongst many others, and lives in the county. Good afternoon to you, Grant. Good afternoon, Anna. Thank you for having me on the show. Well, it's lovely to speak to you. Do you agree? Are we not as polite as we used to be? I think um, times have changed a bit. Um, Sadly, yes, people are probably not as polite as what they once were. Um, but I just think it's 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 a modern world we live in, and, and sadly that it, it has declined a, a little bit. But I've noticed recently that it, that people are getting interested in wanting to learn about etiquette and manners again. Uh, do you think that's the Downton Abbey effect? I have a real good theory <laughs> that because we're seeing this kind of old school styling, we're all going, "Oh, I'd love to be I, like that." Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm sure it's to do with Downton Abbey do you... and upstairs, downstairs, and I think, as you said, people are watching it and they're thinking we would we would love to be able to to be like that or to entertain like that. And, and yeah, I think that's definitely what's getting the interest. The question, of course, is, is good manners written in stone? You know, if you look at De Brett's, there's, there's, if you're in any doubt about anything, you can look on there and they'll tell you exactly what you should do. Or is it actually an evolving thing? What used to be impolite is now acceptable? I, I think, personally, I think it's an evol- evolving thing because... I know everybody always refers to De Brett's, and that's a fantastic place to go if you're not sure of anything. But I always say to people, in your own home, you're king of your castle. If you want to behave a certain way, you will. And the thing about etiquette and manners is it's respecting other people, other people, the way they do things. They might do things in a certain way. And if you go into their home, say I was to come to your home, I, I want to be able to do everything without upsetting you. And that's really what it's, it's, it's about. So, I mean, at the end of the day, if I come to your home and you're happy, not you, you know, you're not going to have a, a Downton Abbey-style dinner, then I know, you know I can be a bit more relaxed. Or you might have a Downton Abbey-style dinner. And then I know to come in my black tie and, you know, to be there at a certain time and to bring certain things. And it's just, you know, it's, it's just makes, it would make me feel more relaxed and also helps the hostess or the host feel um, at ease as well. Yeah. So what do you think would constitute your, your typical good manners now then? Um, things like, um, it's really simple things, but holding doors open for people. Anybody, um, not not just a woman. Uh, no, for a man a, well. anybody today, because you know, one time it was always for a lady. But you know, if I if I go into a shop, I'll, I'll automatically hold up for whoever it is, man, lady, child, you know, whoever. Um, you don't always get a please or a, you know or, or, or more anything. You don't normally get a thank you, which is quite. Um... No, but I've got an answer for that. What you do is you then slam the door at them. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you deal with it? <laughs> if I didn't get a thank you, I'd say that's it. No, I'll tell, you what I, I'll tell you what I really do, Grant. This is what I really do. If somebody, if I hold the door open, especially if I've waited for a little while for them to get there and then they go through and they don't answer me, I go, that's all right. Yeah, you're welcome. You know, I do it's, say it's, that. It's really frustrating. It, it happens often, doesn't it? You know, you hold the door open and the person just walks through as if they're meant to. And it's difficult. You know, you, half of you wants to turn around and say, excuse me. But um, normally if, what I would sometimes say as they walk through, I'll, I'll, I'll say, Thank you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, so, um, and they welcome. might then give me a look. But um, it's trying to do it in a way where you're not going to end up getting punched as well. <laughs> <laughs> There's new manners. Just avoid getting punched for well, an entire day. Well, that's the thing. We live, in, we live in a modern world, so we have to be... Um, we have to be careful. And, you know, at the end of the day, maybe that person didn't say please and thank you because there might be a reason behind it. You know, they may be having a bad day. We don't really know what's going on in their lives. And I think sometimes I always kind of think that maybe, that you know, there's something maybe that we don't know about, so we've got to just think, oh well. That's very magnanimous of you. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, etiquette, when we say etiquette as opposed to manners, I always think of more for people moving in upper circles, you know, in the kind of circles that you've worked in in the past, you know, house staff and things like that. Is that really what we're talking about, do you think, now? And are are there still quite a lot of strict rules if you are working either for the royal family or for famous people, you know, those circles that most of us don't work in? Yeah, I mean, I think in private households today, um, etiquette and manners, which is very much the same thing, they complement each other. I think um, in today's private houses, yeah, etiquette and manners are really important. I mean, when I, I started in this industry about 16 years ago and, you know, I could, I was amazed at how things were kind of regimented, how things were done and the timings and, you know, seeing people turn up for dinners in black tie and, you know, the way they did things and the thank you letters after an event coming in. And, um, you know, we, the staff learn that. You, you very much pick up from the employer. 
And all my previous employers have always kind of said, well, you're almost like an ambassador for them. When you go out and about, you know, doing your day-to-day bits and pieces, whether you work for a duke or a, a prince or a, the, the gentleman at the end of the street, um, you're kind of representing them. So if you do anything, it's, you know, if you show any kind of bad behaviour, not holding a door open for somebody, <laughs> um, it will possibly get back to them or it, it kind of lets them down a little bit. So And you don't really want to do that or let yourself down. So, um, yeah, I think in private households, I think it's quite important. Sadly, I think, you know, uh, it's up to the individual. You might get some individuals in households who don't want to stick to the etiquette and manners, but um, I think a majority a majority do. Do they? Mm. Well, that would be good for you because you're actually starting a course mm. for butlers, aren't you? So, and, yeah. and, I mean, there are... I've, I have seen the odd course around, but they cost an absolute well, see, arm and a leg, and I wonder, you know, what you what, what do you learn when you go on a course for a butler? Well, see, that, that's the thing. I mean, over the... I was offered to go on a butler course many, many years ago, and I'm, I'm really glad... Oddly enough, glad that I didn't actually do it. It was, it was a very expensive course, and it was over quite a number of weeks. And I didn't do it. And um, then I started meeting other butlers who had been on butler courses, and a majority of them would say to me they felt that it, it didn't really help, kind of help them with what they were wanting to learn. It didn't because you're not really in the real environment. You know, it's, a, it's like a training school. And, uh, you know, this mate got me thinking, well, maybe if I could offer some sort of a, a kind of course where it's like an introduction. It's not saying... I'm going to turn you into a butler. It's going to give, see, you want to come along, it's going to give you an introduction to the world of butler and all about etiquette and manners and behaviour and how to how to kind of be a British butler. And um, and then at the end of it, I mean, there's a one-day and a three-day course, and then at the end of it, um, I would then put you in touch with a top London uh, recruitment specialist uh, who will then position that individual into a house or a household, depending on what, how we feel they've, they've done with the course and where they want to go. And um, and then the plan is for a couple of months we'll kind of keep an eye on them to make sure they kind of settle into the new role, and then you know I suppose it's just like you know kind of letting them just develop themselves, but they always know we're kind of there. So it's not like a butler course where you do it for 17 weeks and then you pay your money, you get your certificate, and it's goodbye. Um, it's a bit more of a personal um, thing, and and it's quite unique because we're also going to be doing them at Thornbury Castle, which is in in Gloucestershire. So mm. it's quite an amazing kind of backdrop to um, be getting these people to come <laughs> along to. So, well, they'll be coming out like prince and princesses, <laughs> won't they? Not not butlers. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, and the notion, and and if you thought thought that there was any shortage of people wanting butlers, I only this morning in my research found an advert. Through an agency saying there's a there's a, a you know a famous couple uh, uh, we've got no shortage of celebrities here in Gloucestershire nowadays. Mm. Um, there is a famous couple in the county they obviously don't say who family who want a butler thirty to thirty five thousand a year they need four years experience do little need to you know know how silver service and get on with dogs so I mean they you know these these positions are out there this is not yeah. we're not talking about. 19th century stuff. Yeah. No, no, not at all. And, and as I said, the, the agency that, that uh, are doing the course with me, they're called B- B- Beauchamp Partners uh, in London, and they were my agent. And there was never a shortage of, 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 of jobs. You know, if I ever, you know, not that I, I've only had kind of two or three butler jobs, but, you know, they always would have a kind of um, list of other, you know, positions and things. And um, so the jobs are there, and they're very, it's not like the Downton Abbey. Everybody watches Downton Abbey and thinks the butler <laughs> yes, yes. kind of. You know, we're we're all at Carson's and we're, we're not. Sadly, today, it's um, mind you, those characters are very true to form. It's amazing how many Carson's and and the uh, O'Briens that I've met in my time. Oh, really? Um, but the um, the actual role of a butler now, it's it's you've got to be able to multitask. You've got to be able to do the the housekeeping, the butlering, looking after the children, and get on with the dog. And yet, do the walk the dog, and you name it. I've I've done it. I've been there. Got got the t-shirt. Do you have to pick up the poop as well? <laughs> Grant. Yeah. Oh, it's Grant. okay. We've still got the white gloves for that. Oh, it's that's fine. all right then. And a silver server. <laughs> okay, really lovely to speak to you, Grant Harold, then former royal butler, and uh, telling us about uh, being polite, having good etiquette, and yes, there really is a call for butlers to this day.